Good afternoon, boys. Welcome to another online class of class seven. Our today's book is English for today, unit six, lesson seven. Please open your books, page number sixty-one and sixty-two. Lesson seven, under the full moon. We are going to start. hope you've got your books open by now there are two keywords at the beginning first i'll give you the words and their meanings first word is relaxed meaning is having no work to do the second word is laugh one's head off means laughing loudly i'll go through the first two keywords again the first one is relaxed having no work to do number 2 laugh one's head off which means laughing loudly okay now let's go to A, the first part of the text on page sixty-one. The first thing is uh, they are asking a couple of questions, two questions basically. This is just a practice for you to do it by yourselves. Number one, can you see the full moon from your house or yard? तुम्हार घर थे के कि तुम्हीं full moon देखते पाचो, बात तुम्हार yard, तुम्हार घरे सामने जो उठों थे के देखते पाचो की ना? You don't have to answer to me, or you, you don't have to do it on the text. It's just a practice. Number two, discuss in pairs or groups and answer this question. What is the question? What activities of the moon are noticed in the following stanza? Niche je koi kya line hai? Me porbo shikhne chaat ba moon ne ki kuchhe. What are the, what are the moon doing? Ota toh maake bed kotha hobe. I'm reading out the stanza. Slowly, silently, now the moon walks the night in her silver shoon. This way and that she peers and sees silver fruit upon silver trees. I'll go through it once more. Slowly, silently, now the moon walks the night in her silver shoon. This way and that she peers and sees silver fruit. upon silver trees now like what is the moon doing she is moving slowly silently without any noise walks through the night in silver shoon the word shoon means shoes okay walks through the night she is moving around the night with silver shoes this way and that that's hither and thither she is moving around she peers and sees peers means to 
look closely at something to peep amra jeta bolu silver fruits upon silver trees okay now i'll go to set b with the passage i'm going to read the passage and we'll try and answer the questions you will try and answer the questions i'll just help you out okay it was jishan's grandparents's house in the village the night sky was clear the full moon was shining brightly all the family members had delicious supper and sat in the yard jishan's cousins jahid and shima were very excited they are the same age they were also studying at a village school their grandparents gladly joined them they were sitting on a bamboo mat everybody felt relaxed they were talking laughing and joking their children's voices were the loudest jahid described how he played for his school in the upazila inter school tournament what sports do you take part in jishan asked jahid jishan could not answer there was no playground in his school and around his house shima also told them how she won the first prize for 100 meter sprint in the school annual sports she sang a beautiful bhavaya everybody clapped their hands in delight julie's aunt mrs jahanara khan told some funny jokes that made them laugh their heads out the family gathering went on far into the night so this passage is about a story where dishan's uh it, the plot is that dishan's grandfather's house in the village the night sky was clear it was a full moon night all the family members had delicious supper and sat in the yard dishan and his cousins were very excited they were of the same age studying in the same school oh not in the same school in a village school they sat on a bamboo mat patti amra chita bolu everybody felt excited they were happy thrilling they were talking laughing and joking they were talking to one another laughing joking they were talking about sports and many other things now we will see exercise c tick the best answer the first question what made jahid and shima excited what made jahid and shima excited well there are four options the first option the shining of the full moon second option meeting with their cousins third option sitting on the mats and the last delicious supper well <coughs> all four are equally uh, important first is as the story goes under the full moon it could be the shining of the full moon full moon it could also be meeting with their cousins sitting on the mats it's not so relevant because in village everybody sits on mats delicious supper this could also be relevant because normally you don't have delicious supper every day it happens when everyone visits you on a specific day my suggestion would be meeting with their cousins option b meeting with their cousins but yet it's up to you to pick and choose the correct answer okay these are your word i'm just giving you the idea now we go to the question number 2 everybody was feeling relaxed this means
everybody was feeling relaxed. This means everybody was four options. Option A, wearing nice clothes. This was not written or mentioned in the passage anywhere. B, talking and enjoying themselves. This is part of the passage. Option C, having no work to do. And option D, sitting under the full moon. Well, I already gave the meaning of relaxed here, having no work to do. So, everybody was feeling relaxed. The correct answer should be having no work to do. Option C. Okay, I'll go to the third multiple. Jihan could not reply to Jahid's question. So, I am reading out the question again. Jihan could not reply to Jahid's question. What is the question? What sports do you take part in? Because options A, he does not like sports. Option B, his school does not organize any sports. Option C, sports are not part of examinations. Option D, his parents didn't like sports. It's pretty unclear here. Why? Because in the passage is written after the question, uh, Jahid asked him, what sports do you take part in? Jishan could not answer. There was no playground in his school and around his house. So this does not mean he does not like sports. No. It could be his school does not organize any sports. Option B, it could be. Yet, it's up to you to choose. We'll go to the last one. Juri's aunt's Funny jokes made everybody laugh their heads off. Julie's auntie's funny jokes made everybody laugh their heads off. Here, laugh their heads off mean. Well, laugh their heads off mean, I gave it before, laughing loudly. So, uh, well, loudly. Option C, loudly. Laughing loudly. Okay. Laughing option loudly. I hope you've understood this passage. Now I'm going to a little more important ones. I'm going to start within about say 30 seconds. Try and cover up with this. I'll start lesson eight, the selfish giant. You got about 30 seconds.
Okay, this is a continuous reading, a couple of lessons together from lesson 8 to lesson 11. We will complete at least half of it in this session and I'll try to complete the other half later. So, this is the story of a selfish giant or I mean uh, the selfish giant. Okay. The Selfish Giant. You can see this picture on page 63. I hope it's clear, visible in your book. Can you see it? Okay, so we'll start from page 63. At the beginning, there is a there are questions. Number one, uh, who do you think these people are? Who are these people? Villagers or family members? Could be family members, right? Family members of, uh, uh, well, the story is Shima's grandfather was telling the story of the selfish giant in the family gathering. So it's Shima's family members. Okay, where can they be? They could be in the yard of the house. That's in front of the house. Second, can you guess what they are doing? Well, the story, uh, this text is about a story so they are sitting gossiping telling stories sharing with one another so I'm going to start the selfish giant the text it was a large lovely garden with soft green grass here and there over the grass stood beautiful flowers also, there were fruit trees around the garden. One day, the giant came back. He went to see his friend in a distant land and stayed with them for seven years. When he arrived, he saw children playing in his garden. What are you doing here? cried the giant in a very gruff voice. The children ran away. Every afternoon, the children came back from school and used to go and play in the giant's garden. My own garden is my own garden, said the giant. Anyone can understand that and I will allow nobody else to play in it. So he built a high wall all around the garden and put up a notice. Trespassers will not be punished. So this is so far of lesson 8. We are talking, this story tells about a giant who is very selfish. He has a beautiful garden and the children likes playing there After school, when they came back from school, they liked to play. It so happened that during this time, the giant went to meet a distant relative and spent seven years with him. When he came back, he saw the children playing the children playing in his garden. It annoyed him as he was selfish. He got angry. He made the children frightened and built a huge wall around with a notice saying, trespassers will be punished. That means those who enter in his garden without permission will be punished. Now we have about uh, let's see four keywords I'll give you the keywords and the meanings right now let's follow it the first keywords are from lesson 8 
first word selfish Meaning of selfish, caring only about yourself rather than about other people. Second word, giant. <clears throat> The word giant, its meaning, large, strong person who is often cruel and stupid. The third word is gruff. Meaning of gruff is harsh or unfriendly. The next is trespasser. Meaning of trespasser, a person who enters somebody's land without their permission. I'll go through these words and meanings once more. We'll start from the beginning. Selfish, caring only about yourself rather than about other people. The second word, giant, large, strong person who is often cruel and stupid. Third word, gruff, harsh, unfriendly. Last one, trespasser, a person who enters somebody's land without their permission. Note down these, we got all these in the very first passage of the poem. While you note down, let's have a little discussion. 
with C, discuss in groups and answer these questions. How do you know that the giant is selfish? How about if I asked you, after reading this passage, how would you consider or explain that the giant is selfish? How do you know? Well, at the beginning, when the giant saw children playing in his garden, he chased them out. What did he say? My own garden is my own garden. Which means he wanted the garden to be for himself. Number one. Number two, he also said that he put up a high wall with a notice. Trespassers will be punished. He did not want to share the beauties of his garden with others. So it's simple. This proves that he is selfish. Now, have you ever seen any garden or park till now? Well, you have, haven't you? Where is it? It's up to you. Everyone does not see a garden at the same place. You'll have different views, different answers. Describe it using the following clues. How big the garden that you've seen? How big is it? It could be in your village. It could be in front of your house, on your rooftop, or some other place. You can give a uh, start saying that its size, how big is it? The trees, flowers and fruits. What type of trees are there? What type of flowers? Does it have any fruits? The names? Does it have a play corner? Or does it have any other attractions? You can try practicing this at home yourselves. So, I hope you've taken up this. I'll be starting within another 10 seconds with Lesson 9, The Selfish Giant, Part 2. Please stay with me. Okay boys, we're going to start lesson 9, the selfish giant part 2. There's only one key word here, so I'm going to give you the meaning of it. Castle, the word is castle.
Okay. <clears throat> the meaning of castle? A large, strong building with thick, high walls and towers built in the past for kings or queens or other important people. I'll repeat it again. Castle, a large, strong building with thick, high walls and towers built in the past for kings or queens or other important people. Okay, I'll read the text. The children had now nowhere to play. There were no gardens around and the roads were busy and crowded. After school, they used to go around the high wall and talk about the beautiful garden inside. How happy we were there, they said to each other. Then came the spring, and all over the country there were flowers and there were birds. Only in the garden of the giant it was still winter. Here no birds were singing and no flowers blossoming. There were only snow and frost and north wind in it. I cannot understand why the spring is so late in coming, said the giant. He was sitting at the window of his big castle and looking out at his cold, dry, lifeless garden. I hope there will be a change in the weather. But neither spring nor summer came to his garden. So in this passage, what we see, the first passage we read that the children played in his garden, he came back, he chased them out. He built a huge wall with a notice that trespasses cannot be allowed. In the second passage we see the children had nowhere to play as the garden was uh, surrounded by walls and the roads were too uh, busy, crowded. So. After school, they used to sit around by the wall, talk to themselves at how happy they were when the garden was open to all of them. After that, we see that spring came and all over the country, birds, flowers, uh, flowers blooming, birds chirping, but only the giant's garden had winter still. The giant, one day while looking out of his window, seeing his dead garden, kept thinking that why is spring taking so long to come? <laughs> but unfortunately neither spring nor summer came to his garden. His garden was cold, dry, lifeless. While reading this, uh, in set B there is a question. Discuss in groups and write an answer to this question. What happens in a garden in winter? According to the passage in our set, what happens in a garden in winter, it becomes cold, it becomes dry, it becomes what? Lifeless. There are no leaves, no birds, no flowers, no sweet smell, no fragrance, nothing. So it becomes what? Cold, dry, almost lifeless or dead. Okay, now suppose you are one of the children who were not allowed to play in the giant's garden. Not allowed to play. In this situation, what would you like to tell the giant? To me, giant ki bolte? giant ke ki bolte? Ke den? Naki. Tapur, what do you think the giant would tell you? Giant ke ki bolte? Prothamoto, she did selfish or she will to now. Bagan Amar, my garden is only mine and it's no others. I will reap its fruits. You are not allowed. Okay. Ashakuri, it up to Lini Etsen. I'm a rookie from Shomoidibo. I mean, lesson ten, selfish giant part three there. Jabu, it to Tulinen.
Okay. Selfish giant, part three, lesson ten. There are a couple of words, three words. We will get. I'm going to put, give the meanings here. Let's note it down. The first word, perfume. Meaning sweet smell. The second word sight. Sight, things or objects that you see. The third word, Twitter. Twitter, to sing in a delightful voice. I'll get to the words back once more. Perfume, sweet smell. Sight, things or objects that you see. Twitter, to sing in a delightful voice. Mishti shore gangawa. Sight, amra ja dekhi. Perfume, sweet smell. Shugandhi. Okay, I'll start reading the text. The Selfish Giant, Part 3 One morning, the giant was lying awake in bed when he heard some lovely music. It was so sweet to his ears that he thought it must be the king's musicians passing by. But in fact, it was only a little bird singing outside his window. Then. The north wind stopped, or oh, sorry, stooped, and a delicious perfume came to him. To the open window, I believe the spring has come at last, said the giant. He jumped out of bed and looked out. What did he see? He saw the most wonderful sight. Through a little hole in the wall, the children crept in, and they were sitting in the branches of the trees. In every tree, there was a little child, and the trees were so delighted to have the children back again that they covered themselves with blossoms. They were waving their arms gently above the children's heads. The birds were flying about the twitter and twittering delightfully. The flowers were looking up to the green grass and laughing. But only in one corner of the garden it was still winter. There, under a tree, a little boy was standing alone crying. He was so small that he could not reach up to the branches of the tree. The poor tree was still covered with snow and the north wind was blowing above it. In short, what a day when the giant was lying awake, he, uh, he heard some lovely music. What happened? It was so sweet. But a little bird singing. 
not when shonge shonge themi ge stood dekhchilo ki hocche what's going on tarpor open window te giant tokhon mone korlo mone hocche spring chole esheche he jumped off the bed and what did he see ki dekhlo he saw the most wonderful sight sight ta khubi sundor je tar bagane spring fire esheche bachchara kheladuno korche hasche khelche pakhira গান করছে গাছে সবুজ আছে গাছ লতা পাতা জন্মেছে বিভিন্ন রকম ফুল ফুটছে সোনাইস শুধু এক পাঁচটা তখনও বিনতে ছিল ওকে নাও উই হ্যাভ সেট বি ম্যাচ দ্য ওয়ার্ডস অ্যান্ড দ্য মিনস এখানে চারটা ওয়ার্ড এবং এর মিনিং ম্যাচ করতে হবে নাম্বার ওয়ান অওয়েক আচ্ছা অওয়েক এখানে তিনটা আছে ইউ ক্যান কমপ্লিট দ্য স্ত্রি ফ্রম ইয়ার perfume sweet smell okna ache perfume number 2 sweet smell ache number 2 number 2 amar ekhane number 2 ekhane boite number 3 sight uh, things objects that you see things or object that you see twitter to sing in a delightful voice tale jeta nei seta hocche awake ami awake ta ekhon dicchi not sleeping Okay, not sleeping. Now, there are three questions which you should try and do it yourselves. I'll discuss it. Number one, why was the little bird singing outside the window of the giant's castle? Why? <coughs> Because the little bird was happy. When birds are happy, they sing. Why was she happy? Because spring had come to the garden. And why did spring come to the garden? Because the little boys, the little children were playing in the garden. And I gave you the ideas, now you fix your answer yourself. Number two, what happened to the garden when the spring came at last? When the spring came, what happened? Uh, trees were so delighted to have children back again, they covered themselves with blossoms. With blossoms, they covered themselves with blossoms. They were waving their arms gently above the children's heads. The birds were flying around and twittering delightfully. The flowers were looking up through the green grass and laughing. Okay? Why did one corner of the garden still have winter? What happened there? One corner of the garden uh, still had winter because under a tree there was a little boy standing, alone and crying. He was too small that he could not reach up to the branch of the tree. The poor tree was still covered with snow. and the north wind was blowing above it to oi oi konai chhele ta khub choto chilo she gache utte parchilo na bidhay okhane winter chilo shit chilo she gache utte parchilo she kach chilo tai oi jayga ta winter chilo okay there is one more lesson in this chapter which i'll get back to you very shortly be with me and keep studying stay at home be safe take care thank you